All right, guys, welcome back to Unlocked. I'm so excited to have on, really, you're my first guest outside of my family. Really? Yes, you are. Whoa. I know. Well, I'm technically family, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Justin Anderson, for those that don't know, first off, he's the best follow on social media. <gasps> so you really are, you're my <laughs> favorite <laughs> follow. <laughs> and also founder of DPQ, which I'm obsessed with. Thank you. Like obsessed, that. the apple cider vinegar rinse. Literally everyone in our household uses that now. I love it. It's so good for your hair. I mean, it's like the best way to not shampoo your hair. We can get into all the products yeah, that later. Yeah, we'll get into, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm obsessed. <laughs> a little sidetracked. I appreciate <laughs> side that track. though. And two, you were on Very Cavallari. Yes, Very Cavallari with my best friend, Kristen Cavallari. That's yes. why it's called Very Cavallari. She's so, she's so cute. I love like, her. We've been friends for, I mean, ever, over 20 years. And she's so my best friend. So how did y'all meet? We met, so we both grew up in Southern California and um, I started doing hair at a young age. And Kristen came in to me to get her hair done. Like she was like 17, like right when she was finished with uh, Laguna Beach. And at that point I was doing different celebrities, but Kristen came in and to be honest, like I was like, oh, she can be such a bitch like coming right <laughs> off of like MTV's Laguna Beach, you know? And I wasn't yeah. prepared to even give her the time of day in the sense that I'm like, we're not gonna be friends, like whatever. Yeah. We hit it off in the first time we met each other. It felt like we knew each other forever. And the thing that stood out to me is she was like the most like, because I worked with every celebrity. At that point, I was just starting off, so I worked with a handful of celebrities. Yeah. But the thing that stood out to me about her is she was always on time. And for being like a crazy 17 year old and like being Kristen Cavallari yeah. at the time in the MTV world, she was always on time, super respectful. Like uh, she was just the coolest person ever. So we hit it off, felt like we were siblings, you know? And then all these years later, we're uh, still best friends. I will say you talked about being on time. I was so nervous today. I was like, I gotta be on time. I gotta be on time. I can't be late. <laughs> I'm huge on being on time. That's like my biggest thing. One reason for me is I get super anxious if I'm running late to anything. Yeah. So I hate being anxious. Like I'll avoid everything. Uh, to not be anxious. So I'm early to everything. And then um, doing hair, I always had to be on time, you know, yeah. in the salon. Um, so who and to, so I went on Instagram and I asked a lot of questions too beforehand just to see what people would like. And it was <laughs> funny because you and I talked about before we came on how people just assume you and I are like best friends. Like it's the weirdest thing. No, it was funny. I was just telling you before we started the podcast, it's um, like I, because I was doing celebrity hair in LA for so long, like I have a connection to all kinds of celebrities and I'm friends with a lot of them, but it's so funny. Like there's certain people on social media that people will kind of latch onto. I'm really big at going on Instagram live. <laughs> I love popping on there and like talking to well, people. You know. <laughs> I enjoy it so much, but every time I'm on there, like everyone's like, talk about the Chrisleys. What about Savannah? And they're like obsessed with it. I'm like, of all the people that you guys could ask about. So literally, um, it's here like we are. <laughs> you've got Jennifer Aniston. You can ask about, and you ask about us. I'm like, it makes no sense. So to there's me. some there's some connection there. I yeah, don't, I don't know what it is. But. And too, so your Instagram is known for. I feel like you have healthy controversy. I like that a healthy controversy. You know, like I, you say things that cause people to think. And you're never hateful towards someone. It's just like, hey, this is how I feel. Maybe try thinking the way that I think and you would understand it. Well, because thank you for saying that, kind of, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're controversial. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but it's in a healthy no, way. No, in a healthy way. And I'm yeah. very, very, uh, that's who I am in person. So I, if I'm going to be on social media as much as I am, I want to be myself on social media. And I've really noticed that like we live in this time where like people don't want to have back and forth conversations, no. right? Our country is basically 50-50 on everything, yeah. right? But we have certain people who are really loud and they control the the, the narrative. Yeah. And that kind of bums me out because first of all, I don't think change ever happens that way. It just creates more- uh, Divide. Yeah, more divide. And so like I, if, if I have any sort of following on Instagram, like I want to treat it like we're all at dinner together. And like I have friends from all walks of life and mm -hmm. I will sit with them at a table and I'll listen to people's opinions. And like, I like to learn from it. And even if I completely disagree with them, even at a table, I'll be like, oh, but have you ever thought of it this way? You know, and even if it doesn't, doesn't change their mind, or even if they end up changing my mind, we can still be friends. And I don't understand yes. why we don't do enough. But here's the thing, anybody listening at home that wants to get <laughs> mad about me saying this right now, because people love to be like, well, that's a really privileged way to think or whatever. And I get all of those arguments that you yes. want to say, but I genuinely believe in my heart that like, 
we need to have more conversations to actually come together or to have any sort of growth. And so that's why I'm on Instagram. Deal yeah. with it for well, real. And too, that's one of the things I've said on another podcast of mine. I was like, of course, we're going to be tone deaf and ignorant to certain things that we maybe haven't dealt with. So you can't expect someone to act a certain way when maybe they haven't gone through that themselves. Right. And I, uh, for me, I can admit there's a lot of things that I still want to learn about. So a yeah. lot on Instagram, I'll ask questions and I put the little Instagram thought <laughs> bubble there and I read all of the response. Like I want to learn from people. I also want to see where people's minds are at. I lived in, I grew up in Southern California, lived in the Los Angeles area my entire life. My okay. whole career was Beverly Hills working with all these celebrities and I was in the thick of Hollywood, right? And it always drove me crazy because I, it's an echo chamber there. Everyone's saying the same thing. Everyone's agreeing with the same thing. And whether or not I agreed with everything they were saying, I still wanted to hear other opinions. I wanted yeah. to like, I wanted to see what the confusion was outside of LA. So like coming, moving to the South, I live now in Nashville full time. I've lived here over three years now. And it's been eye opening to me yeah. to really just be around different types of people. And I feel like that's the problem with like, New York and LA and Dallas and Chicago, we have all these big cities, but they're all so different. But then we're all connected by Instagram and we're I supposed know. to understand each other and agree. And mm -hmm. I got to this place where like, I read a lot of comments on celebrity friends of mine or people who have a really big following. I like to go through and see what the comments are. And I'm like, everyone's hateful. It's and they're crazy. hateful because they don't feel heard or they don't feel understood. Yeah. And so I don't know, I miss, I miss conversation. And too, that's like one of the things I went on my parents' Instagrams whenever all this legal stuff started happening and I just turned off their comments. Smart. Because I was like, I'm not, they're not gonna know how to do it and they're not going to do it. So I'm gonna take it upon myself to go and turn off the comments. And it's like, if you, if they follow you, you can comment, but if they don't, then you're out. Smart. Because I was like, it's not, they're, someone voicing their opinion isn't worth someone else's mental health. No, and the other thing about that, I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, you're hiding something if you yeah. hide your comments or, no, it's protecting yourself. It's called yeah. boundaries. Like I am really proud of people when they turn their comments off. I'm one of those people, I'll post a picture with a celebrity friend of mine that people don't like, and then in the comments, people start talking crap about that celebrity. And I just delete the comments I yeah. delete, because I don't want that person to see that. They get enough of that crap on social media. And then people start writing. They're like, you're deleting comments. And it's like, because you're an asshole. <laughs> There's no reason to write about the way that somebody looks on yeah. a picture on my page it's... that other people can do. And the other thing is like, my grandma follows my page. So watch your mouth. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't, grandma. I don't understand that. Like, we've gotten so comfortable with being like total assholes on social media. Like, would you say that in person? No, that's the thing. And when people get a reaction, you know, nine times out of 10, they're like, I didn't mean it. I'm so sorry. Oh, I, yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm the king of that. I am the king of if somebody leaves a nasty comment, I'll delete it. And then I immediately DM them. I'm like, did yeah. you really want to say that? And what did you mean by that? And then they'll backtrack and like, sorry, blah, blah, the whole thing. But um, my thing is like, um, no, that's not anybody's right to yeah. just like put up a nasty thing about someone. And we don't have to leave it there. People are like, why are you deleting comments? You can't I can't do that. Yeah. I can't I can't protect my space or protect people that I care about. And also like those comments just breed more hate. So like for me, no, I'm not open no. to it. If we can't come together, then get off my page. Yeah. And we really... can disagree. I love conversations. But and I in love a healthy Yeah, manner. I love disagreeing with people like, oh no, I don't see it that way. And whatever. Yeah. We can go back and forth all we want. But uh, no, just like the serious hate stuff, it's really weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> it's really it weird. Is. I just never... think it's, I think it's weird that we've like accepted it. That's like one thing I want to fight back on so much is it's like you have to stand behind your words if you're going to write it mm -hmm. on a. And so many people use these fake trolling accounts and all that yeah. kind of stuff. If somebody has a fake trolling account, especially, I delete and block all of them. Well, yeah, it's like my you mom can't said, show your face. Get exactly. Out of here. My mom was like, I've never gone to follow someone or to look at someone's profile to just go and say hateful stuff. It makes she was like, no I'm never. sense. It like, makes no sense. It makes no sense. But, and too, when it comes to Instagram, like we said, you'll talk about like all the hot topics that are going on. And I love a hot topic. I know. And I <laughs> love when you do because it really does. It encourages me to think differently or to even educate myself more on certain topics and something that you talked about what was it during covid it was the big mormon like documentary that came out that there's been so many of them i know there's like a mormon obsession right now <laughs> there <laughs> is and 
And one of the questions that someone asked me was like, how to un-F your mind from the Mormon church? Um, so the reason that they're asking that probably with me in particular is I grew up Mormon. I grew up in a really big Mormon family. Both of my parents were raised Mormon. They came together. So I'm from a massive Mormon family. And it's funny because like all of my cousins and everyone is still Mormon, very much so. And they practice and everything. And a lot of my cousins will reach out to me and they're like, Justin, thank you so much for like being positive about the Mormon church and not bashing it. Cause I don't, yeah. I don't bash it. But here's the thing. I don't have a reason to like, I really feel like I am who I am because I was raised in that church. The Mormon church is all about like love and family and all that kind of stuff. There are a few things that are mm -hmm. off like in every religion. And so I don't feel the need to bash it. Everyone has this idea that like the Mormon church is like this <laughs> wild cult or whatever. It's the nicest, most normal people ever. Uh, you know, polygamous is, is not Mormons. Latter-day Saints, the Mormons of now, they're not polygamous. Mm -hmm. They don't have multiple wives. They're the, they're the most normal people <laughs> you've ever met. And that's what I mean <laughs> by people being like tone deaf or just ignorant to it, because I'm not gonna lie, I'm like, oh crap. But also, I feel like you meet one Mormon that like lives their life in a way that's not the Mormon church. And you're like, oh, gosh, because there was this guy that I knew, Mormon, his <laughs> dad was sleeping with his mom's best friend in the Mormon church and like all these things. Well, that's not like, Mormon. That happens in every <laughs> church. That happens in every neighborhood. It's like, it's so funny too, because it's like, I'm a gay man. And so yeah. a lot of people will be like, Justin, how can you be gay and like not um, bash the Mormons or bash religion? I love religion. I understand yeah. the importance of religion. Do some people abuse religion? Absolutely. Yeah. Are there bad Christians? Yeah, there's good yeah. Christians, bad Christians, there's shitty Mormons, there's everything, you know? <laughs> but I think that the, at the core, the the great thing about religion is it like uh, gives you purpose, it gives you morals. Mm -hmm. You know, having a faith in something makes you a better person. Um, so I really respect people's religions as, as long as they're good people. You and know? too, one of the things because on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City. <laughs> so because people were asking me when it came to you about like your favorite housewife. Oh, all I'm these a huge things. housewife fan. Yeah, huge. <laughs> I'm like y'all. I really don't. Like I cannot. But Julie does, right? I've watched, yes, my yeah. mom watches it. I've watched maybe a handful of episodes, but because I feel like if you don't start from the beginning, it's kind of hard yeah. to get it. Because Once you, you get in, you're sucked in. So don't yeah. start it. My boy, <laughs> Scoot, we've been together for eight years. And when we first got together, he was like, I will never watch that stuff. He's more obsessed than I am now. Like once you start watching, you become absolutely obsessed. So don't start. <laughs> <laughs> so was the Real Housewives of Salt Lake because there were, were there Mormons on the show? Yeah, there was Mormons on it, but they, I mean, they did the Bravo version of it. They're, uh, they're probably all Mormons, kind of like I'm Mormon, you know, yeah. like they were like the bad like casual. Mormons. Yeah, casual Mormons, or they were ex-Mormons, um, but they all live in Utah, and Utah is Mormon, and yeah. so they live in that world. I have cousins of mine who are like um, upset about the way that they like uh, portray the Mormon church, um, but no, some of them are Mormons, but they, they're bad Mormons. They're drinking and they're cussing and they're beating each other up on TV. <laughs> and one of them I, is going to jail right now. Jed Shaw, she's yeah. throwing shoes off of a boat right now. You know, like, <laughs> so it's like they're bad Mormons. Don't even trust me. I've seen Jen Shaw and Chris Lee way too many times together in the media recently. Oh yeah. You guys I'm have like, that connection right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, <husband>, yes. <laughs> you, Jen Shaw, Erica Girardi. It's been yeah. a big year. It's been a big year. Not you. No, you. no, not me. <laughs> not me. Um, but yeah. So, okay. Real Housewives. Who's your favorite in like the whole franchise? In the whole franchise, it's really crazy because it's like uh, people get really heated about this stuff because I talk a lot about Housewives and I had to pull back a bit because like my DMs will go crazy, <laughs> like people talking so much, like people get fired up. So let me be real careful here. But, oh uh, no, gosh. Just okay, I, my, well, I love <laughs> Kathy Hilton right now. It's so hard for me because I love so many of Justin, them. Justin, first off, I watched a few episodes of the Beverly Hills with Kathy Hilton and I loved her when she pulled out that box fan. And <laughs> we'll not go anywhere without the box fan. And I was in Dallas and I was staying at the Rosewood and I called down and asked for a fan and they brought up a box fan. No. And I took a picture of it and I was like really channeling like my inner Kathy Hilton and tagged her and she reposted it. 
she's an icon. She's a, so I used to do Kathy's hair in LA and I absolutely love her. Like she's the greatest person ever. Like yeah. one of those clients that I had so much fun with in the chair. When I heard that she was going on uh, Beverly Hills Housewives, I was like, oh my gosh, is she gonna be able to like show her actual personality? Like I was kind of nervous. I was yeah. like, what if she hides who she really is? Cause she's playful, she's funny. She doesn't take life that seriously. And she totally, she was herself. She lived up to it, you know? Um, so she's one of my favorites, but then I also like her nemesis right now on the show. I think Lisa Rinna is fabulous TV. Like I love Lisa Rinna and people get so angry about that. But here's the thing. Well, see, cause the, I'm gonna, Lisa Rinna posted a few days ago or something on her Instagram story when this whole Balenciaga scandal came out mm -hmm. and was like, she's not going to talk about that because there are more important things that we need to talk about. Such oh, more as, important than uh, kids being uh, yeah. whatever we, I don't know what we can say on the I podcast. did, I did. I've already discussed it because I was like- Oh, it, I've done it too much. I yeah, <laughs> but that it really turned me off because I was like, this isn't a point in time to- but you know what that is. It's, <laughs> and I'm not saying this anything mean, but it's like these people still want to be connected to fashion. They still want to yeah. have the to these things they think if they say that then the other fashion brands won't let them come to the show or all that kind of stuff and it's like that in itself is gross but that happens everywhere it's disgusting and i think everyone should call it blinsky i'm disappointed yeah. in celebrities there's very few times because i lived in that world for so long and i understand how a lot of it happens and it's not what a lot of mm -hmm. people think hollywood is outside of it yeah um but with that particular thing i think it's embarrassing that more yeah. celebrities didn't talk about it and there's this weird ass thing that people made it seem like it was a conservative and a liberal thing so like when i talked about it on yeah. um, social media everyone's like oh you're such a conservative conspiracy That's theorist literally like, what people's comments were like questions why don't you just tell us how conservative you really are see it's and it's like it has nothing to do with that no everyone will make it about conservative and liberal all the time but with a situation like the balenciaga thing i don't get how anyone couldn't just be absolutely disgusted and the fact that they filed outraged. they filed a lawsuit against which went away the company, now. which went away which they dropped and they filed because that was to get us to shut up exactly <laughs> they filed a lawsuit just to get us to shut up by saying that they didn't see the images they didn't know it was on the production company That's whatever the biggest load of bs i mean you have been in this industry for a long time i've been you around know. all this stuff when my clients do it all this kind of stuff everything is so approved. When I did Very Cavalier, they made me change my clothes all the time, yeah. you know, for like the interviews. Like these people know everything that is going on with everything, which like just, like Lisa Rinna says, own it. Like yeah. own the situation. I don't, I don't know. It's so weird. And it's <laughs> it makes my stomach hurt because like I know that people do this thing about the whole conspiracy theory thing. And they're like, and it just, then you're falling into the game because yeah. like that's what they want that's what they want you to say to people who speak up they want you to call them a conspiracy theorist so they'll they'll shut up about it like we're talking about kids you fucking weirdos like <laughs> Talk about it. Be like, that is so weird and we will never stand for that. And too, it wasn't just one thing. It wasn't one little thing. It was all oh, the yeah. hidden messages. No, was, and yeah. you even, which this is gonna sound very conspiracy theorist, but like you even researched the name Balenciaga and like Baal, what it means. B-A-A-L, yeah, hello. <laughs> it's all, all of it is. But here's the one thing that I wanna say about that, because I think some people find this conversation fascinating and we don't get to hear enough of it. Uh, so you'll hear it right here. <laughs> <laughs> there is this thing that, um, there's so much gross stuff that happens in Hollywood, but there's also yeah. gross stuff that happens in every city in the country, right? Yeah. There's gross stuff that happens in politics and all that kind of stuff. The one thing about Hollywood, and I want this to change because I think it's starting to get gross, is there's so much shock factor. A lot of this stuff is done to get people talking like this because yeah. what does it do? Shit sells out. It's like a couple years it's ago. Sad. Yeah, it's a couple years ago when uh, a little no Lil Nas X, is that his name? Yes. I love him, He's I love his music, but he sold these shoes with like blood in them, right? So they're supposed yes, to be like I the, remember the devil's shoes. Um, all of a sudden, uh, they talk about it on Fox News and, and church people start really like outraged about it. He sold out his shoes in like three hours. So mm -hmm. it's like they know that if you get everyone screaming about it, it's going to create more buzz for the brand, yeah. which is sick. It is. But um, so a lot of this stuff is just shock value because people will say to me, they're like, Justin, why don't more celebrities speak out on this stuff? Like that means they're devil worshipers and they're disgusting, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, no, I think they just all know that this is how they sell stuff. And that's when and you're selling yourself to the devil. And it is. And it's hard. <laughs> if there is a devil, I don't know what you believe. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the hard part, too, is, though, you know, with being in this industry 
with certain celebrities, like if you're not an A-list celebrity that's got millions and millions and millions of dollars in the bank and you don't have to worry about pissing someone off, you know, versus a celebrity who's like B-list, C-list, whatever it may be, whose life depends on the next deal, then it's harder to kind of take a stand for what you believe in. So you're saying that the people who have tons of money in the bank, they should take a stand. I'm Because I agree. I think, yeah, I think it's, and I think if more of them did, more other people would, uh, would come We forward. would, cancel culture would easily go away. Because yeah. I feel like all of these people who, there was a big point in time with the whole Chrissy Teigen scandal. And, you know, with, then, which kind of just flew by, just flew by whenever she had told the girl to, oh, yeah, that you was know, bad. that whole thing. But there's been so many times where like she could step up in a positive manner and hasn't stepped up. And then it's always the celebrities that have, I don't know how I'm trying to say it. Like they have so much, but yet they just, they keep quiet. And it's the ones who like, I, for me, like, yeah, but my livelihood. You, but don't you feel like those same celebrities who keep quiet are the ones who demand everyone else to speak up when yes. it happens with something that they don't necessarily agree with? Yes. And uh, this is part of my conversation of saying that, like, I'm not going to sit here and pick a side right now or tell no. anyone. I want people to, like, have these conversations. I think I cancel culture. I, I hate cancel culture. I hate feel like it. we all hate it. Like, who likes cancel culture? You know, there's a thing about accountability, but at a certain point, like just take accountability, apologize, and then move on. Yeah. But when you hide from things and you don't speak up, of course people are going to get outraged. But then the other way, people get canceled really, really fast. And I think that that's what's, uh, we're tiptoeing around a we lot, really but I think are. we know what we're but saying. I think it's just like for me, I'm going to speak personally. For me, it's like, okay, my livelihood, yeah, like we'd all know my whole world's like blown up in smoke. So my livelihood does depend on certain deals and certain things happening. And right. it's me speaking up about certain things could kill that, you know? And right. so then it's like, okay, I really want to stand up for what I believe in, but also I have bills to pay too, you know, right. which makes it really hard, which goes back to the cancel culture thing of if you state how you believe and it's different than what we're telling you, then you're done. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. The holidays can be a really tough time between managing family dynamics, racing from thing to thing, and braving the cold and dark weather. It's normal to feel down. So this holiday season, I really hope that you do something special for yourself and give yourself a gift to raise your spirits and not just for the day. BetterHelp is absolutely amazing. I mean, the fact that you have someone to talk to about how you're feeling and what you can do about it is truly a gift. We all know I'm a huge advocate for therapy. I really don't know where I'd be today without it. Therapy has so many different benefits. I mean, I've learned new coping skills, how to set healthy boundaries, self-empowerment, dealing with trauma, and all the other things that just go on in life that get us down. So I really hope that you guys will try BetterHelp. This is the world's largest therapy service. BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists, 100% online. Plus, it's extremely affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Savannah. That's betterhelp, H E lp.com slash savannah s-a-v-a-n-n-a-h so i'm kind of like taking questions that i've gotten <laughs> and putting them into the conversation but some a lot of people asked your viewpoints on the whole britney aldean Marin moore scandal that's happened because we know <laughs> we're here in nashville like we're here in nashville and again that's like another one because it's like i follow britney aldean and i follow Marin morris and i'm 
uh, friendly with both of them, yeah. probably closer to Marin in the sense that like I see her at more things and whatever. Um, but I like both of them. And yeah. so on social media, I follow both of them. So everyone was saying like, Justin, what do you think about the Brittany and um, Marin thing? And it's not that I'm afraid to speak up on it. It's just like, with that, that's their thing. And that, yeah. and since I am connected to them, it'd be weird. Like, I don't feel like I need to pick sides. I see where both of them thought they were coming from, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and so their followers can work that out. The one thing that I'll say is in all of these situations, because I do have an opinion about everything, but I don't <laughs> want to be, but I don't want to be mean. And, no. and also I don't think that my opinion matters so much that I need to scream it all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the thing too. Like, who the fuck am I? You know, it's like my <laughs> hairdresser from LA, you know? Uh, so I don't want to scream things out. I want to talk. You yeah. know, I want to talk through these things. With that particular situation, they are both really nice people. And I know they're both really good people and their intentions are both in good places. For me, and a lot of people are going to get pissed off right now. I just like that Marin was standing up for people who needed to be stood up for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Britney's allowed to say whatever she wants. And people, maybe they took it the wrong way. Maybe Britney didn't mean it. But I just like that Marin was sticking up for the underdog. And that's yeah. all I can really say about that. Because that's who I am. If I see some, a bully question, getting bullied. Am I right or wrong in the facts of people it? People are going to be so mad that I just said that. And I get that. But I'm it's telling fine. you right now, I don't hate Brittany Aldine. No. You know, it, 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 at you all. No, But it's for just, me, it's, yeah. You can have friends who believe completely different things and still be friends with both of them. Like, it, we don't exactly. have to be friends with people who just view things exactly how we view it. But with that whole thing, didn't... Britney didn't start by saying anything. Oh, you were trying to go into the facts yeah, and break it down. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't technically say direct anything at Marin to begin with, correct? She said something she said and her then Marin stood up for. Yes, right? and you're absolutely right. So that's the thing that I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. These are two grown women who can do whatever they want. Yeah. And I don't want to be the referee and I shouldn't be the referee. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. There was one thing said, but then it started getting media. And attention. it got mean. That it, was a thing on both ends. Yeah, on both ends. It, on, it, it just got yeah. mean. But it started getting attention for what Brittany was saying. And then Marin kind of popped in and said her piece. And again, so at that point, I just go to the place of like, OK, they were both wrong in their own ways or they were both right in their own ways. But I just liked that Marin's intention was standing up for a group that needs a little bit of help right now. Mm -hmm. Whether or not I anybody too, by the way, anything I don't have to agree with. Yeah. A group. If a group is getting bashed, I like people who stand up for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's who I'm. I've been bullied. I was bullied in junior high. You know, like yeah. I wanted people to stand up for me, you know? And so like, I always kind of root for the person who's, um, who's protecting yeah. other people, but I'm not saying that either of them are wrong. <laughs> I love you. All right. But does I, that kind of make sense? It does. It does. It's, I think at the end of the day, it's like you love two people and they're uniquely themselves believe what they believe you can understand why they both believe what they believe because of their backgrounds and that's what i've said is if we can all come together and take a moment to understand someone's past and their history and maybe what causes them to think what they think right. and believe how they believe so it does it makes a lot of sense and it's not about choosing sides it's just we know in nashville it's crazy how that whole thing blew up yeah, and it was how, insane. And people were like demanding to know what you thought about yes. it. You know, like I didn't even want to go on inst Instagram and at that time. And even like going out to dinner and like everyone in, it's funny how TV and you'll get what I'm saying, how the TV world so quickly intertwines with the music industry. Right. Being here in Nashville, like the people you've met and the people you've become friends with. And then it's like, okay, now there's this huge divide. People are having to choose sides. People are having- That's the part that's so weird to me. And I get it. There's going to be people that are listening right now who are like, I can't believe that he's not yeah. whichever side or whatever. But the thing that I'm really coming from a place of like, these are two humans. I just want to sit back and kind of like, what were their intentions? Mm -hmm. You know, Brittany had her intentions of- protecting and she's all about children which i am too and then Marin has hers of protecting a group of people yeah. and standing up for a group of people so if you really step back for a second take your fucking politics out of it yeah you know and just look at these as two people and what their intentions They're, were both separately. of their intentions were they both had their own intentions people. yeah and I know, and I know that people are going to say, but Marin did the name calling and all that kind of stuff. And I get it, but you know, and, and that's, you know, and I think it's just all, I think the whole 
thing could have been approached in a different manner. And I think it would be really cool to see the two of them sit I down. I love that. Like, like sit that's... down for a conversation and uh, nothing that's hostile, nothing. It's just like, hey, this is where I was coming from. This is what I meant by it. You're allowed to believe what you believe. I'm allowed to believe what I believe. But like, I'm sorry for disrespecting you or yeah. I'm sorry on both sides. No, I think it could no. be that's like where our world needs to get totally. to, to where it's like, I don't agree with you. The biggest thing that makes me sad about all that is I feel like that is just another case where we fed into the media BS. What, you know what I mean? Like, I 100%. feel like that, that that is the purpose of the, the media is to like put those headlines out so that we off to scream at each other and pick a side. And that's why I come from a place like I'm not doing that. I'm no. not giving into the media BS anymore. These are two people who thought they meant well. And so it's like, these are two humans. I'm, I, I'm not trying to be cheesy, but I'm like <laughs> looking for the place where like we get along again and we sit down and we're know. like, wait, what did you mean by that? Cause I didn't actually mean that. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're calling me this. And, and like, I didn't, I, I was thinking about like have a conversation and we all don't have to like jump on our sides and be like, they're disgusting. Yeah. Or, they're disgusting. And Cut it's, it out. Literally, it's weird. I spoke about this previously and it was, you know, like my best friend, Chad. So he's gay and we were up at the corner pub like a few nights or a few, I would guess a week or two ago. And there's this like ex NFL player that was in there. He's an older guy. He was like a big Jay quarterback. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're about to get on that one. <laughs> but it was, so we're sitting in there and you know, he's older. It was a different day and age back then there were different beliefs, different opinions, but we're sitting there and he started talking to Chad and he was just being very intentional with his questions and was like, hey, I don't want you to take offense to this. Like, I really want to understand and I really want to get to know like how you felt when you were coming out being gay and how like that impacted you. And I was sat there and I was just in awe because I was like, this is really cool. Like well, someone you know taking the time to ask and get to know someone instead of just i don't know it was really cool no i uh have a lot to say about that because i didn't realize i didn't experience that in la everything's so open book there and like yeah. even that conversation in la people are like how dare you even bring up this person's sexuality and how dare you even ask them these questions and it's like how do we learn then yeah. you know what i mean because i've met a lot of people here in nashville people who i really really love and they'll ask me questions like that being like hey i don't want to offend you but like this and i'm like nothing will offend me if yeah. you don't know and i might have the answer if it's having something to do with like being gay or whatever it is like i'd love to talk about it like let's get to the bottom of it and i think that's part of the problem is like people are afraid to ask questions now and that's when we're in a really scary place like we mm -hmm. should be able to have conversations and ask questions otherwise how the hell are we going to understand each other yeah you know and so um so i love that unless someone's sitting there and they're being facetious or trying exactly. to be exactly but like a... people are curious and they want to learn and like i like people learning i'll say in my neighborhood here like i'm for sure the only gay guy <laughs> in my whole neighborhood like i live in a very suburban part of um nashville and you know like everyone is straight families and well everything. and too it was funny because whenever you and i were talking about like a new house for y'all you were like because i remember i had sent <laughs> yeah. you one and you were like wait you were like that's too far out. Like, I don't think there's any gays yeah. in that area. You're like, I can't move any further from downtown than I already am. Yeah. <laughs> but I, um, in my neighborhood, I feel like, like, I like that. I like being like maybe the first gay friend that my neighbors have, you know? Yeah. And like, I hope they feel very comfortable asking me. And by the way, everyone's, lovely yeah. and amazing it's so funny the biggest misconception like when i was moving here like friends in la were like you can't move to the south like you're a gay man i'm like what are you talking about and everyone was like everyone has their idea what the south is going to be like versus L la and everything i have to say that like tennessee is Nashville is diverse. Like people hang out with each other here. It's an actual melting pot. LA, any of you bitches in LA <laughs> that I love and I'm not hating on LA, <laughs> but LA is so separate. Yes. You go to a party in LA, everyone's white. You go to a Hollywood party, everyone looks the exact same or whatever. Like mm -hmm. everyone, like there's black clubs, there's uh, Mexican clubs, there's the white places, all that kind of stuff. Like, but here you see everything mixed together. Yeah. And that's that the is truth. So true. Like I, like LA's LA acts like it's so open minded and everything, but everyone sticks in their little bubbles. And there. It, I agree with that 100%. Like when I was out in LA, it was so hard to fit in. 
Yeah. So hard to fit in. No, LA, like you, it's it's a bizarre place. Like I said, I grew up there. So I like since I was a kid, but I always felt really sorry for people who just moved to LA because it's yeah. a tricky city, like really hard. I remember like being in school and it's actually really funny because the two nicest kids to me, like everyone, like people were just mean. And Christopher Schwarzenegger and Cameron Azoff were two, like the Wait, two. Wait, what school did you go to? Uh, to the Brentwood Oh, I didn't school. realize yeah. that. Yeah. I did not Brentwood, know yes, that. Yes. Wow. And so we're the same age. So they were the two, like people would be so mean and they were the two nicest people. Well, they have really people. good parents. Like yeah. they, they both have really nice parents. But like, and too, you would never know, okay, who they are, what they have, none of that. And oh, yeah. even to this day, like, Cameron and I will go back and forth on Instagram. Well, like just the nicest two kids like I've ever met. Yeah. And I would say it was so refreshing because everyone else, like it was hard to fit in. No, LA is interesting. I was the biggest like protector of California forever. Like I'd get so mad when people would talk crap about it or, <laughs> or whatever. And so I don't ever want to like bash her, but I got no. to a place where like it wasn't for me anymore. It wasn't I'm, fulfilling. Yeah, I'm really happy that I did leave. And now that I don't live in LA, I see it in such a different way. But I think the problem with LA in a really, in a small nutshell is, uh, there's so much using going on, so nobody knows who to trust. And, and it's every, how can I get, who can I you. use to get to the next yeah. level? Like everything about that city is like that. Yeah. And so that is never going to put off like a good vibe, no. especially to an outsider. Yeah. You know, um, or, or to somebody who doesn't have anything to offer. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing too. It's like the, the uh, class system, I don't know what the exact words would be. Like, it's very defined in LA. Like, you're not mixing with it. No, like, it's, it's like, like you're either at the top of the top or, Right. It's, I don't, Right. I'm with you on that. Yeah. And that's why it's like, I love Nashville because it, it is so diverse. Well, there's a lot of everything here, yeah. you know, and I like, I learn a lot about other types of people and I really like that. And I, since I was a kid, was really just attracted to Southern people. I love Southern people. <laughs> <laughs> and um, like I love, and it's a real thing how nice people are like, when we moved into our house, like the amount of, that's how you and I met actually. Yes. Like you, your family reached out, your mom baked us a cake. Yes. You know, and it's like the people, like, and when people in Nashville say like, let's get dinner or let's hang out, they mean like, it. Like we actually In mean LA, it. they say it, you never hang out, you know, <laughs> like at all, also they don't too, mean it. <laughs> if you're in town next week, that Friday, we're going to do like a full fun day of going to like all the Christmas themed bars and like it's going to be I need, really fun. I didn't do that. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, will you keep me yes, posted on I'm that? I'm going to keep you posted. <laughs> so, okay. So now that we've gotten, we, if people haven't gathered, Nashville is a very small town. Have you learned that since being here? Beyond small, like freakishly small. Like very, very yeah. small. Like something happened this morning and I was like, how is this girl connected to this girl who, my God, cheated on me with this girl and that girl. And you're like, all of them are friends now. It's like, the, it's so weird how small it is. And so one of the questions someone asked was your relationship with Jay Cutler since how was it when he and Kristen were married versus how it is now? Oh, my God. Everyone <laughs> always wants to talk about that. And I understand why, because I did very cavalier, yeah. you know, and so, of course, they would want that to know that. was your life. Yeah. And uh, we don't have a relationship at all. Kristen is my absolute best friend in the world. Like, we talk all day long. See, and I love that because the loyalty, like, that's a big thing. It's like, hey, I liked you because you were married to my best friend, but... If y'all are done, we're done. Yeah, and that and that's who I am. But also, if Kristen was like, um, you could be friends with Jay or whatever. Like, I'm also open to being friends with anybody or yeah. having a relationship, you know. But uh, but it's also not like Kristen's dictating. No, you not at, no, being not at all. Friends. Kristen yeah. and I have like seriously like the best friendship, like yeah. the best. Like that's the huge reason why I moved here was because of Kristen. And then I it ha that. just so happened that I went on to very cavalier. Like I, a lot of people think like I moved here to because everyone thinks reality TV is so fake, which there's parts of it that are fake, of course. Yes. But like I was actually moving to Nashville, and they put it all on the show. I'd mm -hmm. been on the show before in other seasons like when I'd come and visit Kristen yeah. but then I was actually moving here and I think a lot of people thought like after the show that I was going to pick up and move back to Hollywood because <laughs> I just like wanted to be a reality star so I was like no I moved to Nashville like this is real life you know and Kristen and I like our friendship yeah. is so freaking tight uh, but with the Jay stuff it's like no Kristen's my friend but I will always uh, be respectful of him because 
her kids, I adore them. And they they are the biggest thing to me. You and know? to I will say, I have been that was like a huge thing that was all over the news, their breakup, whatever. And I've been in such awe of how she's handled it. Kristen's like with her kids badass. and with her, like I don't <laughs> think there's ever been one thing that's come out that she said something or she. Oh, she won't. Like, she, yeah. and there's so much respect to be had for that, and it's like I have to learn that because when <laughs> I get <laughs> when I get heated and like I feel like my story's not being heard, it's like I'm gonna shout it. Oh you know? yeah, no, I get that. I would be the absolute worst. Yeah, and I've I mean, actually, I mean, a little insight into Kristen and my friendship, you know. I have gotten myself in trouble talking about things because I didn't oh, No shit. I know, but I didn't realize it like after doing the show, you're connected to that show and you're connected to that person, right? And because yeah. Kristen and I are best friends and we did that show together, everything is Justin Anderson, Kristen Cavallari's best friend, you know? Yeah. And so I didn't really realize that. And like right after we stopped doing the show, like I would say things on social media because I talk about everything yeah. and it would get picked up as like a news story on these mm -hmm. uh, Us Weeklies, People Magazine, all that kind yeah. of stuff. So I had to learn to like be careful with my words because I want to talk about everything, but I'm not going to hurt her kids. I'm not going to exactly. hurt Kristen. And also like, I'm sure you know it, you're a um, celebrity in your own right. And I'm sure you have friends that have done things that impact your life. And I don't want to do something shitty that will mess with Kristen because Kristen's very, very... Um, not careful. She's just she's protective of her kids well, and her reputation. Kids and you don't want yeah, like so I can't do stuff like that. Yeah. No, I love that <laughs> because I've like encountered that same thing with some of my friends. And it's like, hey, like I know you didn't mean for it to be this way, but look, this is how it was taken. Right. And it's that's not really the first thought that comes to their mind is okay, well, how is someone going to take this? Well, and it's different with um reality TV for whatever reason, because I think reality TV is considered to just be like an open book, right? Yeah. So like I was saying, I mean, I've worked with Jennifer Aniston, Gwyneth Paltrow, Miley Cyrus, Margot Robbie, Chelsea Handler. All of these women are like really good friends of mine. And I'll talk about them in beauty um, articles. Yeah. Cause I do all these like interviews with beauty magazines and I do podcasts about beauty stuff all the time. And I'll talk about all of those celebrities. No one cares. They're not gonna write about it in People Magazine. Every once in a while, like something will come up, like celebrity yeah. colors, Justin Anderson says, Jennifer Aniston likes whatever, you know? <laughs> But, but um, I could talk about other things and they won't pick it up. But with Kristen, I, it's because we did the show together, Yes, I think, you know, and then like it, things will be written about. Mm -hmm. And that was shocking to me when it first started happening because it happened a lot in a certain period. Yes. And then people start coming to my social media and they're like, you're, uh, everyone loves to say you're thirsty. Look how thirsty you are for attention. I'm like, I didn't want that attention. Like yeah, I didn't like, want to be written in People Magazine for talking about a certain thing. Yeah. So I learned a very big lesson there. <laughs> <laughs> a very big lesson. Yes. No, y'all. Justin, I will say your Instagram, like I've said, I love following it. First off, you give some great show recommendations. Oh, I love TV. We have such good TV yeah. right now. You give some really good recommendations. What was the one I was like pissed off at you for? Because it was oh, probably so sad. From scratch. But. I was so like, I loved you, but hated you. Cause I was like, I'm sitting there like sobbing. I, I like, had no idea I was through. going into that show. It's a show on Netflix. It was yes. on Netflix, right? And it's like still a top trending show. Yeah, it's amazing. But I mean, you cry for like eight <laughs> episodes straight. It's like the saddest thing ever. But it's, uh, that's also Reese Witherspoon. Shout out to Reese, who's a friend of mine. But Hello Sunshine is making the best shows and movies right yes. now. Like yes. they are on fire right now. Like they're coming out with a Christmas movie. Uh, I think it's called Something from Tiffany's that's coming out that I'm so excited about. Tomorrow oh it comes out. Okay, then I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. That's I love awesome. TV and movies. Like, I'm obsessed so with it. So, would you ever go back to TV? Uh, would I ever go back to TV? Um, there has been certain things that have been brought to me. Kristen and I almost did a project together. Mm -hmm. But um, it started going in the wrong direction that both of us yeah. were kind of like looked at each other and were like, we don't really want to do this again. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason we started doing a show together and they, there was a production company involved and the whole thing. But then the, all the feedback was like, will you guys get more personal and talk about that stuff? And they wanted it to yeah. be really like dramatic and uh, that. And so we didn't want to, I want to do something in a different com capacity if it happens. And there's a couple things that I'm talking yeah. about right now. 
And uh, hey, but, we could just do like a fun Nashville show, you know? Sh- just I don't like know why they don't us. have a show in Nashville. <laughs> it would be honestly that may be our next thing. That would be really fun. But I don't know why they don't have like a good show about Nashville because there's know. so much happening. There's so many personalities. But, there's really um, not. It's always yeah. like some like scripted like game show, and it's yeah. like let's be real here. I loved doing reality TV though. Like I thought it was fun. The thing that was hard about Kristen's show is it was Kristen's show, and it was. Was, it was very real, but yeah. it was like, again, I was, it was Kristen's show. So it wasn't mine. I'm a big personality. I want to let loose. I want to get wild and talk about stuff. So I felt like me being on her show was like a very tame version. It was I would want to do like a, like a real housewife. Oh, I would love it. I would want, I want to <laughs> let loose and like really entertain people and like be myself. I have the tricky part though, because my partner Scoot is not into it. So whenever we've been talked about like uh, doing things like within yeah. our house or me and Scoot's relationship, yeah. he's not into it. He He's just so really So that private. was too, a lot of people are interested in y'all's relationship of like, are you married? Are you getting married? Are you? No, we got engaged and we did it on uh, Kristen's show. Yes. And I always said I would never do it. But then it, uh, it felt really right. I got to this place where I was like, okay, uh, the audience that's watching Kristen's show is very, they're like, they're fans of Kristen and they're fans of Jay who plays football. Yeah. So this audience is very like middle America, Southern, all this kind of stuff. And I thought for a second, I was like, okay, I'm a gay man on the show. No agenda. I didn't yeah. have a freaking agenda, no. but with, we, I was talking about proposing to Scoot and they were like, will you do it on camera or whatever? And I was like, oh, this would be sweet for like people who like might have a gay son at home. And he's yeah. watching with his mom or, you know, like watching with his best friend, who's a girl who loves Kristen and he's gay. And he sees like two uh, men who are in love with each other. So I, I, I'm i proud of that part of it. I like that yeah. we got to share that. So we got engaged and then the pandemic happened. And Which was a test for everyone, for I feel everyone. like. Oh, well, we did really good. I have we to say. We did really good. We, Y'all did. Like, I no, remember. We're, like, the, it's, the mo- it's the most easy, sane part of my life is my relationship. I really found the right partner. I've gone through bad things. We've yeah. been together for eight years, you know, but I had those relationships and you've had them mm-hmm. where you learn a lot in your first few relationships yeah. and then you're an amazing partner. Like we met at the right time. We are so compatible. I, you know, I, I can tell, there. like I love that about y'all because you are so loud and like out there and have such a personality. And Scooch just like lets you do your thing, you know, and it's like, I just love it. And he, yeah, and he enjoys it and he gets a kick out of it. I've never felt more understood by a person. But then uh, the other way is like, I really let him be who he is. I can't take Scoot to a party and expect him to be the life of the party and talk to everyone. Scoot likes to sit, his nickname is Scoot for anyone who listens. (laughs) His real name is Austin, sorry. I could never, I'm like, no, it's Scoot. No, everyone calls him Scoot. But we'll go to like a party and he wants to sit in the corner with one person and get really deep and connect, you know? Like he's just a little lover and he like likes to really get to know people. And I run around like a Tasmanian devil, <laughs> but we both appreciate who each other are, you know, and yeah. we're really like, um, we're just great with each other. So we'll get married eventually. I just didn't want to plan a pandemic and wedding. too, it's like, yeah, who wants to plan a pandemic wedding? And like, if you're supposed to be together, you're going to be together regardless I of whether really you've got a marriage license yeah. or you don't. Exactly. And I, I would have no problem being Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. <laughs> Goldie Hawn and I have the same birthday. I think we're secretly the same person. <laughs> no way. Uh, but no, cool. I, I don't mind that. And it's not like Scoot's going to get pregnant anytime soon. So we're not in a rush. We're not like trying to <laughs> I have <babies>. love, <laughs> I swear, if I put the, if I showed you these questions, because someone was like, does, uh, do you and Scoot want kids? That was literally some of the questions too, which was really we, funny. We go back and forth. A big part of like wanting to move to Nashville was like, I was like, if we end up having kids, I do not want to raise them in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I was like, I'd like to raise them in uh, in Nashville. So that was a big part of it. But I go back and forth. I've got to be honest, you know, and I'm not trying to be drama or anything or a Debbie Downer. Yeah. It's nothing about me as a Debbie Downer. I like to see the positive thing. I don't know if I want to have a kid in the world that we have right now. I would, I want to wait a little bit. Yeah. I'm getting older though. So I got to figure <laughs> it out. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, I, 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 we would be great dads. He would be an incredible dad. I'd be a fun. You would be dad. really fun. If you're like me, you probably aren't getting enough probiotics in your diet. And I've realized how much better I feel when I do get regular probiotics. I've tried kombucha and I've even tried probiotic pills, but I was never really good about constantly taking them. Shocker. I just know that my gut always seems to hate me. We now know that good gut health is the key to good overall health. Good skin, good immunity, disease prevention, 
all the things. And I recently found these cute little belly wally bars. They call them your belly bestie at Sprouts. And I'm obsessed. They have real live probiotics. They're gluten-free, dairy-free, no sugar alcohols, and even help with bloating. The chocolate chip and cinnamon swirl are seriously insane, y'all. I mean, they taste like a cookie and who doesn't love a cookie? (laughs) I have one every morning and it really helps my stomach. Stock up when you go to Sprouts. Chocolate chip and cinnamon swirl are my absolute favorites. Find them in the bar aisle. The box is neon pink and the packaging is so cute. I love their hot girls have IBS billboard in LA. I mean, it's too good. No Sprouts near you? That's fine. Don't freak out. Use my code UNLOCKED and get 30% off on their website, bellywelly.com, B-E-L-L-I-W-E-L-L-I.com. That and too, that's another thing. Everyone, of course, Justin always talks about everything that's like controversial, whatever. And so many people I've seen like come at you. Why haven't you spoken about what's going on with the Chrisleys? Why haven't you? Everyone says that every time I go on uh, a live. And um, my thing is, and I have addressed it before. I'm like, uh, it's a family that I love so much. Mm -hmm. And it's none of my business, first of all. And like what you guys see is basically what I'm reading or whatever. Um, But all that I can say is like, you guys were the nicest, warmest people to us when we first moved here. And I fell in love, you know, Mm -hmm. and I absolutely love your family. Like the most real kind people ever and so I have to admit I've been heartbroken for like the past couple weeks and like yeah. Scoot's sick of me like talking about, I'll talk about it daily like I'll just be like oh yeah. my God, Julie I won't go give her a hug or like whatever so um and too because wh- how did we meet I don't remember the exact I was just trying to think about that because like what was I we have to go back like in our DMs I don't Maybe know I, like, how you up we in a met DM. or something but then I remember in the midst of COVID you did our hair. You yeah. remember that? Like yeah. in the sink, in the kitchen sink. And then I've got a video of me and dad in your driveway during that bad snowstorm. Oh, yeah. And he's got like a spatula trying to get like shit off his windshield. Yeah. But I don't know how we actually like came together. We have to go back deep in our DMs because I'm really curious. I was thinking about that on the way here. I was like, I don't even remember how it how it happened. Yeah. I had some weird like real estate stuff happen here. So your dad and I started talking about that, but I yes. think we'd start talking before I think that. May, I, we had gone back and forth and then you and I started connecting on the real estate stuff, I think. And then I don't know. And we had run into each other a few times. You remember at Bourbon, we finally ran into each yes, other. Yes. Yeah. Well, we were destined yeah. to be friends. I mean, it was I know. obvious. And too, I will say with the whole thing going on with my family, I do appreciate and have so much respect for you because I feel like for people that you love and care about, you're not... It's like with the whole Kristen thing. You only talk about oh, yeah. her so much, you know? Like well, you're not yeah. going to go into detail about her personal yeah. business. Yeah, so to wrap up the thing when people are saying, why don't you talk about it? I talk about reality TV when I watch it in real time and I think it's really fun. Yeah. But I, since I've been around so many celebrities in LA, I also know when to pull back and kind of give people space. Mm-hmm. And I also realize that because I'm connected to certain people, if I start spouting things off online, everyone's going to take it as that's the truth because Justin yeah. has inside scoop. So I would never do that. You know, like yeah. I would never be like, well, my take on it is and like try mm-hmm. to, to say things, even if I was trying to be careful and protect you guys, like that's just not fair, you yeah. know, because we have an actual connection. Yeah. So I would never go into some deep thing about that. Um, and that's hard for me because I have a big mouth, but I love people more than my big mouth. You know? <laughs> oh, trust me, I know. Y'all, we're not going to go into detail about it, but Justin, if y'all watch his Instagram lives, I feel like nine times out of 10, you're like drunk when you go on Instagram. It's funny because <laughs> everyone thinks that because of my personality, but like I... A lot of times they are, but it's <laughs> when I'm on vacation, I drink. I don't drink at home. Like I yeah. do not drink at my house. So people, I'll be on live, and they're like, "How drunk are you?" And I'm like, "I don't drink at home. I don't smoke marijuana. <laughs> I don't drink, and I don't take pills. Like I am sober when I'm at my house, like doing that. But yeah. when I'm on vacation, I'm most of the time I'm yeah. drunk or whatever. Well, no, I was on an Instagram live, and Justin like pops his head in, thinking he is like being funny, oh and leaves my a God. comment about something that was like private and personal that I had told him. 
Oh and my god. The next morning, do you remember? I woke up to a text and you were like, Savannah, Scoot told me what I did. I'm so, so sorry. I hope you know I would never intentionally do it was something. So bad. Without giving it anything. We were at we were in Nantucket. We go to Nantucket for like a big part of the summer. And we were hammered one night. You were live. I went on your live and I was making a joke. Yeah. Because I was drunk that I thought had nothing to do with you, but there actually was a connection. <laughs> and you were like, Justin, what the hell did you just say that for you know not on live you like texted yes. me after and i was like oh my god there are a lot of times where i like really put my foot in my mouth like i i really do but i love it because you'll be like oh crap i'm i'm messed up like i full yeah you take full responsibility oh for i'll it, take full responsibility I love. for everything like you know, I, I just love your viewpoint on pretty much everything I appreciate you saying that. Well, at the end of the day, and I'm going to say this about myself, when I talk about this thing, like I have a massive heart for people. Like I genuinely want everyone to get along. Yeah. I grew up in a big family when I was a kid. Like my parents would always talk about, like I was like the peacemaker. Like I really like people getting along. Life is fun. Like what the pandemic taught me is like life can be taken away from us at any second, right? And I've yeah. always known that about life. So like I want to laugh. I want to have fun. I know there's a lot of issues in the world mm -hmm. that we need to work on but they are getting better. And I'd like to focus a little bit more on like happiness and getting along. Like, yeah. That's very important to me. And too, I think the way that your mind works too and your viewpoint on things is because you've gone through a lot of hurt and a lot of trauma and whatever it may be that like I, you have a more in-depth view on things in my opinion. Yeah, I, I know I've been through a lot and I'm also like, I really think things through. I think about people's feelings all the time. You know, yeah. I, I want to relate to people. I also realize th the privileges that I have, mm -hmm. you know, just for whatever reason, I don't need to go into them. Yeah. But I realize those things like I want to relate to other people. I want to understand people. I want to understand people's hurt. I want to take care of people like those kind of things are really important to me. So I'll do it in a playful way on Instagram and I'll kind of be jokey or whatever. And but there's I really a lot of times to where, though, when you're doing that, you're hurting. You and I've kind of had that conversation before. It's kind of like people expect you to be this like happy go lucky, playful person, but also a lot of the times that oh, comes yeah. from a place of hurt. No, I'll get frustrated and rather than go on Instagram and yell at everyone like eh, like whatever, I want to go on and like be like let's talk. Like yeah, there are things. I'm a freaking empath. Like there's things that happen around yeah. me that like really affect me. Uh personally and I take it on for other people and so and I know there's other people out there that are like that so like yeah. I want to create a space where it's like we can talk about things and be sweet and kind to one another but um yeah I'm an emotional person like I'm never well, I love that yeah no I know how to feel my feelings girl <laughs> I had a dad that was a crier my dad told me from a young age like men do cry and you should feel your feelings and I feel like that's why I am who I am my dad was like this big macho guy yeah but he was like a feeler we talked about feelings you know and um so i'm big on that i think people should talk about their feelings i'm really afraid of like men in particular who won't talk about their feelings yeah like when people are super overly macho first of all i think that's a front i think they're a pussy <laughs> but i think that like that's i think the most macho men are men who can talk about their feelings i'm with you on that and i think that's kind of like with me and guys and like when you're out here dating and all these things it's like hey you know it's okay to be soft like it's, it's yeah. you don't have to have this hard front you it's can have hard emotion here. i feel pr bad for pretty girls like <laughs> you in nashville because there's so many attractive men here there yeah. are but um it's turned into a little bit of like a frat party here right there's it like has. a young mentality here like people don't really want to settle down nashville like it's a party yeah. scene now and too i will say that Right now, the place that I'm at in my life, well, first off, Nashville is such a party scene. There's so many like man children, yeah. not enough men and more just man children. And there's also like with everything going on with my parents and the way that I've described it to everyone is I'm like, you're grieving the loss of people that are still alive. Yeah. So it's like, it's grief. It's what I'm doing. It's what I'm working through. You've experienced grief with your dad mm -hmm. and there's part of me that feels so much guilt for like continuing on with my life wild i get that though and you shouldn't because yeah. you have to live your life yeah and um you don't have to explain it to anybody but this is a very unfortunate situation yeah. for you to deal with regardless of what anybody says and how they judge it from the outside but like 
you should feel your feelings and you should talk about it. Yeah. And uh, I know we don't talk every day, but like you should talk to everyone about it in your life and you should be vulnerable and have people, let people yeah. hold you and take care of you and tell you it's going to be okay, you know? Because it's a massive thing, you know? Yeah. And you did reality TV for so long, but you don't owe anything to anybody. And that's the thing is people think you owe them yeah. your entire life. And too, our show was very different than like what Very Cavallari was. We had no drama on our show. Right. Our show was more of just like a feel good comedy. Which I thought the reason I loved it so much, I mean, your show is my favorite to just have playing in my house yeah. all the time because <laughs> it makes me feel good, you know? And that's why so many people loved it. And there's something so important about a show like that being on the air, yeah. you know? So, uh, but you guys have amazing fans. Like they love you and they're backing you. People are rooting for you and they fight yeah. for you. People love to be assholes though about anything. They do. I mean, every week there's something happens that everyone wants to clobber onto and go crazy about. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of miserable people out there yeah. and they want to see other people be miserable. And that's, that, that's sad. Yeah, you know? it, it really is. It really is. And two, there is... Because obviously with our whole situation, we've, everyone's coming to us about Chloe and Grayson and adoption and things like that. And some of the questions that people had asked, do you have a relationship with your... Oh, my son. Your son. Yeah. So when I was in high school, I... Um, yeah. Give the backstory. Because I think this is the coolest story and the way that you went about it and how much love and respect. And I was like, I'm still in awe. Of you. We, uh, when I was in high school, I had my high school girlfriend and we were together for a few years and uh, we had a lot of sex because I'm <laughs> super, super horny no matter what's going on in my life. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm very gay. I'm not confused with my sexuality, but in high school, I was pretending to be straight, right? Yeah. And I love women, like love women. I love yeah. being around women. So I was, I was pretending I was trying so hard to be straight. So I was with my girlfriend who I loved, you know, but more like a best friend now that I look at it. But we had a lot of sex and we did a lot. But the last time we had sex, before we broke up, she, uh, she got pregnant. And so she came to me and she were in high school and she got wow. pregnant and we, um, we kept the baby because our, our families, it was a conversation that both of our families had and whatever we ended up, uh, she carried through with the pregnancy and we put our son up for high school. So like she was, we were, we were in high school. She's like in a cheerleading outfit. She's full on pregnant. Like it was like something out of like a TV show. No and it was way. like, yeah. And I have a really big family in the town that I grew up in, like a yeah. really big family and they're Mormon. Like it was the talk of the town. Right. Yeah. And so, um, she had the baby and we, uh, found a family to adopt the baby. So we met, uh, we met different people. It's so long ago that I don't remember like the order of how it all happened. And too, I feel like when something like that happens also too, you're in high school. And it's a traumatic oh thing my to gosh. happen that yeah. your brain just kind of shuts off. All, oh, so much of that. That is so absolutely true. Because yeah. it's like, I remember at that time, like my mind was spinning. I'm in high school. I'm 17 years old, you know, and like my mind's spinning. So there's so much that I just kind of like blacked out or whatever. Uh, but long story short, we uh, put our son up for adoption. Uh, then our lives went on, you know, uh, right after that, I like basically come out of the closet. So everyone's like, oh, Justin just had a kid and now he's gay. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, <it> <laughs> that, that must have really yeah. turned him. <laughs> it was a, it was a busy year for my parents. Uh, but then <laughs> all those years went by and my son uh, 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 reached out to me on Instagram. So I was like sitting on the couch one night with my boyfriend Scoot. And wasn't now. this after you had moved? Was it after you moved to Nashville? No, this was in LA. I was okay. still in LA when he reached out, and he DM'd me on Instagram, just like a hey. And I was like, hey, who is this? And I looked at the picture, and then it hit me, and I just started sobbing. And then we uh, we created a relationship. So yeah, I talked to him. We text and we try to talk like at least once a week. Yeah. And we have a relationship. But when I went, so all the years later, we got reunited, and I went to dinner with my whole family and his whole. Uh, family, the parents who adopted yeah. him. We all went to dinner together and it was beautiful. It was amazing. I sat at the table with like my son who I haven't seen in 17 years. He's a 17 year old kid now or whatever it was at the time. And I'm watching this kid who I didn't raise who has the exact same manners. Like the way I use my hands yeah. and the look of our hands, like our hands look the exact same. And he like talks like me and his adopted mom was telling stories about him that were me to a T in high school. Like I used to love all my teachers. I'd stay after school and hang out with my teachers because yeah. I loved adults. He would do same things like that. He really gets along with like adults. So it's weird to think that like 
you don't have to be there to raise them, but they are like a part of you. Yeah. But when I was sitting there with his family, they have the most beautiful bond in the world. And like, I loved it so much. I, it makes me emotional thinking about like, we picked the right people and they loved him so much. But when I left from dinner that night, I went home and the next morning I called her, I called the adoptive mom and I was like, I want you to know that like, I respect your relationship so much and I'm so proud of it. And I never want to get in the way of what you have. So mm -hmm. I'll be here for whatever you guys want me to be or whatever Tyler wants me to be, but I'm not going to get in the way of it. Like, I don't yeah. want to mess up this beautiful thing that you guys have. Yeah. And so we have a really good, uh, and she really respected that because there's there's going to be this fear. Like well, I have a really cool family, and he's sitting yeah. there. Like <laughs> I'm sure there was a part where it was like, oh my god, what if all of a sudden she wants to be around Justin and his family all the time? Yeah, because your sister Malia, yeah. I think she's the coolest one out of everyone. Malia's great. <laughs> Malia's so great. But you and my brothers, like both my brothers are yeah. really really cool. Um, so I think there was a fear for that, but, um, we just talked about it all again. It's about communication and talking and doing what's right for, uh, who is important the kid. That's know? amazing. And I think too, just your viewpoint on it is like how much love and respect you have for the people that raised him. Oh my gosh. And how it takes more courage to sit in your situation and say at 17, like, I can't do this. Like, I can't, why am I going to struggle and not give a kid what they need? You know, like, you know right, what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, I think yeah, it takes I've, more courage. No, yeah, like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a, easy. Yeah, it wasn't an option for us to do that because she was a year younger than me in high school. We were in high school, there, there was just no way and it would have not been good, right? Like, had we done yeah. it that way? And we know what the other option is, the yeah. option that the whole country is fighting about right now. And that's the thing, I'm not gonna go into that stuff or fight for one side or the other on that. But that was a case where I was like, had we done that, there would be no this. You know, there so would... when you when you see it in real time, when I see a 17 year old that I brought to this earth, like that, there's times like that where you're like, oh wow, like things are, they make sense in a different way. And yeah. that's why also like, I don't wanna yell about that topic that's yeah. not my topic to talk about. Yeah. I can't get pregnant. So I don't want to yell yeah. about that. I believe that people should be able to do what they need to do for themselves. Mm -hmm. 100%. And I just think, I don't know. I think your story is like the most beautiful story and I love it. And oh, I love your heart. And I love just like knowing you makes the world a better place. Oh my God. I love you. It really so, does. I feel the same way about you and it your really whole does. family. So. And too, I appreciate you coming on my podcast today. And we talked about everything. We really did. And that went really fast. How long were we doing <laughs> An that hour. for? No way. Yes. That went so fast. I thought that was five minutes. I thought that was like the appetizer. <laughs> oh my. No, Jesse, they got like seven full courses like, it, was a full, <laughs> it was a full thing oh but i God. love you and i appreciate I you i love you so much thank you so much Savannah. Thank you're you. the best